Hey guys, welcome to our first uh, video in physics this year. As I mentioned in class, when you watch these videos, please make sure that you're uh, paying attention, focusing. Don't split your attention. If you've got the TV on or the radio on or something like that, in addition, uh, your attention isn't going to be on the material in the notes and you're liable to miss something. I also strongly encourage you to be actively taking notes as you work through the videos. In particular, uh, you know, this is really just to kind of give you the, the main concepts. Um, as questions come up, write those questions down throughout the entire year so that when we get to class and we have that time at the beginning, you can ask the questions that may have come up as I went through the notes um, so you don't forget. Uh, the first few sets of notes are going to be more straightforward, but as we get into the material, you'll probably find yourself having more questions. So this first unit uh, is, is related to tools of physics that we're going to be using the entire year. Uh, things that are going to be important in every single uh, unit, regardless of what we're addressing. Units and measurement and uncertainty. Uh, these are going to be the keys, not just in the, the content, but also in the labs that we do throughout the year. Uh, so this material is, is fairly important for the entire year. Uh, if we start with our units, in the, the metric system, the SI system, uh, as it's often referred to, there are seven fundamental units. These are the basis for every other unit that we have. Uh, every other unit is defined in some way by one or more of these fundamental units. Uh, and these are the meter, kilogram, second, ampere, kelvin, mole, and candela. The mole you've probably talked about, hopefully, in chemistry, and you'll recall that. Uh, kelvin probably, too, when you talked about temperature. Uh, we'll be referring to kelvins as well. Ampere is a measure of electric current. Second, of course, time. Notice the one kind of strange one here, uh, strange in a way is our kilogram. And and for most of these, there are no prefixes, right? Six of the seven, there's no prefixes. For the kilogram, uh, we, we have that, instead of the gram, it's a kilogram. And the main reason for this is because, and, and we'll, we'll look at some examples of these in class, a gram is such a small amount. It's, it's for practical purposes, uh, for day-to-day -day purposes, the kilogram is a much more valuable measure. It's it's a better uh, me order of magnitude measure for what we're going to be doing. Uh, and then we, of course, have meters, and we're going to use those a lot. And then candela is our intensity of light, and we'll touch on that briefly, but not a whole lot this year. Uh, from these, then, we get what are called derived units or derived quantities. And these are things that are hence the name, derived from those fundamental units. Uh, the best example and one of the most common ones that we're going to be using is the Newton. And the Newton is a unit of force, and we calculate it, we say F equals mass times acceleration. Well, our fundamental units for mass are kilograms. Our fundamental units for acceleration, well, actually even acceleration is somewhat derived because it is meters per second squared, but you can see that meters and seconds are both fundamental units. So uh, force is kilograms times meters divided by seconds squared. And so one Newton, as we see over here, is a kilogram times a meter per second squared. Now just to point out really quickly here, uh, Another way to write this, another type of notation that you'll see, uh, is m s to the negative 2. And so this is just another way of writing the same thing. Um, m over s squared is equivalent to m times s to the negative 2. Uh, the negative, it just is going to tell you that it's down here at the bottom. Uh, IB particularly likes this notation a lot, so you may see it a good bit. And it'll be throughout the notes, and sometimes I'll use it, sometimes we won't. 
Here's a list of some derived units and what their base or fundamental units are. We're going to hit on all these at some point this year, uh, but you can see that particularly when you get things like voltage and resistance, those uh, base units, it gets a little bit more complex, but ultimately it can be broken down into some combination of those seven base units. Okay, uh, so we're making measurements, we're writing down numbers, uh, we have to decide on significant figures. I think in chemistry, they 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 really are are uh, focused on it, or they spend more time on it. Uh, we're going to obviously try and be aware of it, uh, but I don't want it to be all consuming. I don't want you to lose sight of what you're doing, or lose focus on the lab or the concept because you're so focused on sig figs. What I do want you to really understand though is this first piece here okay you've got these fancy magical math machines uh, and that they'll give you 10 decimals maybe more right that's not a reasonable number of decimals you don't know your value to that much precision uh, and as when we talk about uncertainty and and carrying uncertainties and errors through one thing to understand is that uh, the number of decimal places gives you an understanding or a sense of how precise your value is. And the more decimal places, the more precise you are. Uh, <clears throat> pi is a great example. right? We started off and, and pi was about 3, and then it was about 3.14, and now it's this unending, ridiculously long series of decimal numbers. Uh, so we know it to a very precise decimal place. But in most of our labs, most of our calculations, we're not going to be able to have decimals that are, are out to the millions and billionths place. Uh, a, a good rule for us is typically two decimal places, but that's not always going to be true. So we do have to kind of pay attention to, to sig figs. Uh, kind of just along with this idea of looking at our calculators please 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 and I will say this many times this year don't just blindly write down what your calculator tells you you're gonna put numbers in you're gonna get a value don't assume that just because your calculator gives you a value or an answer that it's the right one look at your question think about what is the what is the magnitude what are you trying to find and does that numerical answer that you get makes sense. If you're trying to calculate the force of gravity on a paperclip and you get 6 billion newtons, you probably made a, a, a calculation error somewhere in there. You added an extra zero or 12. Uh, so always look at your, your answers with a critical eye. It's too easy to just write down what your calculator says, not think about what does that answer actually mean. Um, anyway, uh, sig figs. Non-zero numbers, always significant. Zeros between non-zeros, always significant. Uh, Non-sandwich zeros that occur to the left of a non-zero number are not, right? Um, so what is that? That is... Um, Point zero zero five four. So this zero and this zero are to the left of a non-zero number. Even though there is this decimal place here, that does not make them significant. This is still only two sig figs here, right? Two sig figs, the five and the four. Uh, zeros that occur to the right of a decimal are significant, provided they are to the right of a non-zero digit. Okay, and so. Um, if I say, let's say I have 50, all right? That's one sig fig, and this kind of takes in this one also. So this is one sig fig. If I add a decimal, now it becomes two sig figs, right? Now I'm telling the reader of this number that I know it to be five zero. And then if I put an extra one, now I know that number to the 10th place and to the 100th place. 
and to the thousandth place. And so my value is getting more and more and more precise as I add these zeros um, to the right of that decimal place. Um, and that tells us that our measurement is more accurate. The difference between this number, between the certainty in this value and the certainty in this value is, is pretty significant in terms of our understanding of the measurement. Okay, next math piece of this, scientific notation. And, and hopefully we've seen this in uh, our math and science classes before. It's simply a way to express our large and small numbers. Positive exponents, we move our decimal place to the right. Negative exponents, we move them to the left. So uh, let's say I have 1,000. Um, this is going to be 1. 0 0.0 times 10 to the third. And so if I saw this in, in scientific notation, I would know that we start here and I go 1, 2, 3, and that makes our 1,000. Uh, if I have 0 .0000, 000, let's say 5, so now we have, that's going to be in scientific notation, 5, just 5 actually, so let's do that. Now it's actually 5.0 times 10 to the negative 5, right? So that says 5.0, and I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Fill in those zeros, and that's our original number. Um, so again, we're going to see that. The, the, the really cool thing about physics is that we're going to hit on stuff from the smallest things in the universe. We're going to talk about quarks, and we're going to talk about subatomic particles, and we're going to talk about angstrom units, and all this kind of stuff that's incredibly small, and we're also going to talk about stars and space, and things that are just beyond our comprehension large, and in order to do that, and in order to have those conversations effectively, we have to be able to comprehend the meanings behind our scientific notation and understand what those magnitudes, what those values and numbers mean for us. So, um, because we're going to be using those exponents and those the scientific notation um, a lot, we have to be comfortable using math with them, just like math with anything else. Uh, when we add, and, and it's similar, uh, I think, in a lot of ways to like variables, like we have x's and y's. If we're going to add exponents, so if I wanted to add 5.0 times 10 to the fifth plus 5.0 times 10 to the fifth, right? All that's going to become is 10 times 10 to the fifth, right? We can add them because they have the same exponent. If this was instead... 10 to the third, ooh, that was interesting. What happened to, oh, that's why. If that was instead 10 to the third, uh, we can't just add the coefficients. We can't just add these guys right here because the exponents aren't the same. Uh, so adding and subtracting exponents have to be the same. Uh, multiplying numbers, we're gonna add the exponents, okay, and so, what that looks like is, no, not that. Here we go, let's do that down here. So we have 5.0 times 10 to the third, we'll put parentheses, times 5.0 times 10 to the third. Uh, that's gonna give us five, we multiply the coefficients, so we get 25. Uh, point zero times 10 to the, we're going to add our exponents, times 10 to the 6th, and then actually we can move that over one more, and that ultimately ends up being 2.5 times 10 to the 7th. Um, <clears throat> dividing, we divide the coefficient and then subtract the exponents, and then when we raise a number to a power, we raise the coefficient to the power, and multiply the exponent by that power. And so, uh, let's say we have 5.0 times 10 to the third, Q, 
cubed, right? So five to the um, five to the third is a hundred and uh, was it one hundred twenty-five? Then we gonna we're gonna multiply these two guys here times ten to the ninth, um, and again we can move that over too, and we actually get one point two five times ten to the eleventh would be our final value. And so there we have our, our math rules for our exponents. So this takes us then to orders of magnitude, uh, which is really what we're talking about when we get into these ideas of exponents. And as we mentioned, in this class, we're going to hit on things that are really, really small and just beyond comprehension big. And we express those values, those magnitudes, using exponents, or what we call orders of magnitude. And you'll be expected to have a, a general sense. You don't have to know specifically, but a general sense of the orders of magnitudes is some common things. So uh, here we have like the universe, the, the understood or uh, thought size of the universe, so the magnitude of 10 to the 50th meters. Um, the human lifespan, 10 to the 9th seconds. Um, the wavelength of light is 10 to the negative 6 meters. Uh, the mass of a, or the, the height of a person, rather, uh, 10 to the 0 meters, right? 10 to the 0 meters is 1. Now, short people might be a meter, children, uh, midgets, things like that. Uh, but we're talking about orders of magnitude. So even though it's not a typical adult person isn't a meter tall, they're within that magnitude. If it was 10 to the first, that would be 10 meters tall. And clearly, one meter is a better estimate of the height of a person than 10 meters, right? Um, so that's what we're kind of getting at with this idea of orders of magnitude. Um, and then the last thing here, last thing here is looking at ratios of orders of magnitude. And this is so that we can compare things. One of the the real common questions that I've seen a lot discusses the ratio of the diameter of a hydrogen atom to the actual hydrogen nucleus. Uh, and so being able to compare things, uh, the, the radius of a planet to the radius of a galaxy, something of that nature. And so uh, our example here, the diameter of the actual hydrogen atom is 10 to the negative 10th. Uh, whereas the nucleus is only 10 to the negative 15th. So also, again, being careful here and understanding that the top number, the exponent, is a smaller number, but because it's a negative exponent, that means the decimal place is moving fewer places, so the numerical value is actually larger. Um, but when we divide, as we said, we subtract. And so we subtract the top from the bottom, so negative 10, minus 15, negative 10, minus negative 15, negative 10 plus 15 gives us 5. So that means that the ratio is 10 to the 5th, which means that the hydrogen atom itself is about 10 to the 5th times larger than the hydrogen nucleus. Now, this, when we think about that and, and why we would even consider it or worry about it, because just to put that in perspective, that tells us that the size of the entire hydrogen atom is 10,000, sorry, 100,000 times larger than the nucleus itself. Or, look at it the other way, the nucleus is 100,000 times smaller than the, the total volume of the, the atom. And that's, that's pretty significant, and that's kind of a cool thing. Okay, that's it for this set of notes. Uh, make sure that you bring any questions in next class, and we will talk about them further. See you soon.